Hello and welcome Mindsetters, you're on Learn Extra Live and today we're doing Grade 10 Mathematics with Natasha. How are you Natasha? I'm very well, it's great to see you again. Kalehu. Great to see you too, it it's been, been a while. while. <laughs> it has, it has indeed. Today we're doing Financial Maths I hear. That's right and it, guys it is one of those sections with so much of application so if you guys have any questions please send them through. Yeah definitely, we know you'll have lots of questions today Grade 10 so get ready for that. You can go over to your board while I let them know what up our prizes today is the casio calculator and the labeler and you know how you win this guys you know that you just need to keep interacting with us be awesome and alert and alive on our facebook page as you know it's facebook.com forward slash learn extra and our twitter handle is at learn extra guys make sure that all your questions are clear concise and you let me know what you need and if you perhaps have something to tell me about the weekend please do that let me know how your weekend went i love to hear that kind of stuff over to you natasha Thanks, Katlejo. Guys, we are going to carry on with finance uh, this week, the same as we did last week, financial mathematics. Last week, we looked at simple and compound interest and basic applications. Today, we're going to take it a little bit further and look at higher purchase and inflation. All right, so just a reminder of some of the important concepts that you learned in grade 10 so far. All right, last week, we looked at simple interest. And you will remember that the formula for simple interest is A is equal to P times 1 plus I times N. And simple interest is where your interest is calculated only on the initial amount invested. Okay, so your interest is only calculated on whatever your initial amount P is. All right, just to go through some of the terms, if you have forgotten them, A is your accumulated amount, or the amount you'll get after you've earned interest. P is the original or the principal amount. I is your interest rate, and N is the number of years. Okay, then the other thing that she did is compound interest. Okay, and in compound interest, what's different between compound interest and simple interest is that in compound interest, you earn interest on interest. Okay, so that's the important difference. In compound interest, we don't just earn interest on that initial amount. We earn interest on interest. So interest is earned on the principal amount plus all the accumulated interest. Okay, so your formula A is equal to P times 1 plus i to the power of n. The important thing to remember here is that when you use compound interest, it's fantastic to earn interest on money invested. Okay, so what happens is if you invest money, your compound interest formula makes that money grow exponentially. But the downside to the compound interest uh, uh, formula is that if you're talking about loans and borrowing money, then your interest is still, um, your amount still grows exponentially and that's not good because you know that if your money is borrowed and your accumulated money is growing and increasing exponentially, it means that you're going to end up paying more if you borrow money. Okay, so compound interest, not too great when you're looking at a loan situation. Okay, as I said before, we're going to look at higher purchase in more detail today, but just to give you a brief recap of what higher purchase is, a higher purchase is a loan repayment and they are calculated using the simple interest formula. On the cash price, and what we always do is if there's a deposit paid, and they will really just tell you this in the question, you will gauge if a deposit is paid or not. If a deposit is paid, we take away that deposit amount from uh, whatever the value of your loan was. Okay, so it's the cash price minus the deposit, and then we calculate our monthly repayments by dividing the accumulated amount, so that's your loan amount with your interest, by the number of months for the repayment. Guys, this will make more, more um, sense when we do a few examples, or if you've obviously done it at school, then you know what we're talking about already. Okay. Population growth and inflation are calculated using the compound interest formula. So what have we said? We've said that if you're working at higher purchase, we're going to use simple interest. If you're working at inflation or population growth, you're going to use the compound interest formula. Okay, so those are the two concepts we're going to look at today. And then lastly, and uh, if we have time, we'll touch on this, but I doubt we'll have enough time to do this, 
foreign exchange, the foreign exchange rate is the price of one currency in terms of another. And you've often heard about exchange rates. Uh, for example, I'm not sure what the current exchange rate is, but you know, a rand is equal to seven dollars and some odd, you know, one dollar is equal to seven rand and some odd cents. Okay, so those, uh, the foreign exchange rates uh, concept is really just expressing the price of one currency in terms of another. Okay. First thing we're going to look at for today is higher purchase. Okay. And as a general rule, it is never a good idea to borrow money. Okay. You don't want to have to pay credits and you don't want, you know, these amounts outstanding and, you know, paying monthly payments. That's never a good idea. But sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you need a big appliance like a fridge. It's a necessity. And you have to then borrow or, you know, you take your, your fridge on a loan agreement. So these loans are generally higher purchase loans. And um, so when you buy on credit, you have to borrow money, okay? And in, if you borrow money, for the privilege of borrowing money, you pay interest, okay? So you therefore end up paying more for it due to the interest on the loan. So like I was saying, sometimes there are big appliances and that that you cannot live without, so you have to go and enter into this loan agreement, all right? So a higher purchase agreement, it's a financial agreement between a shop generally and the customer, and it really tells you how the customer will pay off the amount for a desired product. The interest on a higher purchase loan agreement is always charged at simple interest, and only a charge on the amount owing. That's important. So what that means is if you pay a deposit, you will then subtract that deposit from the cash price. Most agreements require that a deposit is paid before the products can be taken by the customer. But in your examples, they'll always tell you whether a deposit has been paid or not. Um, the principal amount of the loan is therefore the cash price minus the deposit, as we said before. And the accumulated loan will be worked out using the number of years that the loan is needed for, and the total amount is then divided into monthly payments over the period of the loan. All right, so it's all gonna make more sense as we look at an example now. So this is the first example on higher purchase agreements. Okay, let's have a look. It says that Amanda desperately wants to buy a TV and decides to buy one on a higher purchase agreement. So if you see higher purchase straight away in your head, you need to be thinking of simple interest, the simple interest formula. Okay, so A is equal to P times 1 plus I N. Okay, so if you hear higher purchase, immediately that should be the formula that pops into your head. The TV's cash price is 5,500 Rand. They say that she will pay it off over 54 months and at an interest rate of 21% per annum. They then tell you that an insurance premium of 12 grand 50 is added to every monthly payment. How much are her monthly payments? Okay, so there's a few things we need to analyze here. We're going to write down all the given information. Um, but just a few things for you to note that when you use the simple interest formula, your N always has to be in terms of years. So you're not going to leave N as 54 months in this case. You're going to have to change it to a number of years. Remember, if you want to change from months to years, divide by 12. Okay, that's an important note. Also, they never mention a deposit. So we can assume that no deposit is being paid here and the cash price of 5,500 is our P. So therefore, if we write down what information we've been given, P is equal to 5,500, all right? The next thing they tell you is that she's going to pay it off over 54 months. So therefore, to work out N, remember, you cannot have it as 54 months, you need to say 54 divided by 12. If you want to, you can work that out on your calculator now and get the answer, or you can put the 54 over 12 into your formula. If we divide it, we get four and a half years. So we'll just keep it there just in case we decide to use it as four and a half years instead of 54 over 12. All 
All right. Uh, the interest rate is 21% per annum. That's quite a high interest rate. So your I, remember it always has to be uh, in a percentage form. So you can either put 21% using your calculator button or that's equivalent to 0, 0,21. And now this little thing about the insurance premium, that's going to be added to every monthly payment. So that's going to affect her monthly payments. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that in the back of our head that once we get our monthly payments from our simple interest formula, it's not the end because we need to take into account these insurance premiums. So we'll add that in a little bit later. So what do we do? First step, we need to work out what the total accumulated amount of this uh, repayment of this loan of the TV is going to be and then we need to divide that total accumulated amount by the number of months so that we can get the monthly premium. So A is going to be equal to 5,500 into 1 plus I which is 0, 0,21 and you can either put in your 4,5 or 54 over 12 up to you. All right, so this accumulated amount is going to tell us how much she owes, including the simple interest, okay? So let's have a look. Let's do this on our calculator. So it's going to be 5,500 times 1 plus I times 4.5. And that gives us an answer of 10,000. 697 rand and 50 cents. Okay, so it was 10,697 rand 97 see, and 50 cents. Let's just have a look that I've got that down correctly. 10,697,5. All right. Now, guys, you can see that this TV of 5,500 rand, now if she were to go and buy this, cash in a store, 5,500 paid up, all done. If, however, she delays it, she doesn't buy it in cash and she takes this HP agreement, look at how much more she's paying. A TV that costs 5,500, she's eventually paying 10,697 Rand. So that's over 5,000 Rand of interest that she's paying on this TV, okay? Which is why it's not a good idea to take things on credit unless you cannot live without them. And no, a pair of shoes does not fall into that category of things you cannot live without. <laughs> okay, so we've got our cum accumulated amount of 10,697 Rand. We need to know how much this works out to every month. But what you need to remember, so this is our monthly payment. All right. What you need to remember is that there was also an, insur an insurance premium. Um, that they told you she has to pay every month. So not only are we looking at our monthly payments of 10,697 divided by 54, we need to add in that insurance premium. And they said that she pays 12 Rand 50 every month in addition to her normal payment. So therefore, let's work out what this is. We add it all up. So it's 10,697 divided by 54. So we get 198 rand and 10 cents. That would have been her monthly payment as it is if she did not have to pay an insurance premium. So if she didn't have to pay an insurance premium, her monthly payment would be 198 rand and 10 cents. But because we've got to take into account this insurance premium, she's going to pay 198,10 plus that 12 rand 50. Okay, so therefore she ends up paying 210 rand and 60 cents every month. So that was 210 and 60 cents. All right, guys, so you can see that monthly insurance premium obviously will increase her monthly payment on this TV. All right, so just remember when they tell you about things like insurance premiums and that, do not take it into your, into your principal amount and add things together and all of that. No, 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 no. You take it to the end, work out your monthly payments, 
And once you've worked out your monthly payments at the end, you will add in your insurance premium, okay? So you're not going to do funny things with that 12 rand 50 and add it into the five and a half. I've seen the strangest things. You're not gonna do any of that. The 12 rand 50 is a monthly payment. Once you've worked out your monthly payment by dividing your accumulated amount by the number of months, you then add in your insurance premium. All right, if you have questions on higher purchase and uh, there's little, you know, little concepts in there that you don't understand, please send those through to us and I'm going to hand over to Katleho. Yes, let's do that. So guys, let's go for a very quick break. As most of you have seen, there's a challenge question up. So now's your chance to actually dig into it so that you can answer the question and maybe even get a prize. See you after the break.